Anyone who believes in indefinite growth on a physically finite planet is either mad or an economist. Looking at the Earth as satellites do reveals an intricate mechanism that shapes every moment of every day and drives every beat of every heart on the planet. Everything is interconnected in an ancient and intricate system, a system of hidden complexity interwoven at every level. Over the past century, but accelerating over the past couple of decades, we've seen the, the emergence of a kind of global data field. The planet itself, natural systems, human systems, uh, physical objects, have always generated an enormous amount of data, but we didn't used to be able to hear it, to see it, to capture it. Now we can, because all of this stuff is now instrumented. And it's all interconnected, so we can have, actually have access to it. So, in effect, the planet has grown a central nervous system. Devices being linked up together using networks, so little sensors on things. You know, these temperature sensors and traffic sensors and flow rate of water and how much electricity all transmitting data it won't be long and it may even have happened already that there's more things on the internet than there are people on the internet then you get this sea of data that you just drown in literally and there's this triangle that's been quite well documented called the DIKW triangle that's data information knowledge and the tip at the top is wisdom the D at the bottom is a sea of data, and when we get this data back home and start doing stuff with it, we apply intelligence to it and transform up that stack. So we go from data into information, information into knowledge, and then glean some wisdom from that. If you look at our planet from space, what you see is something like a neural network with the cities as its nodes. And that is as good an image of the planet as a complex system of systems as one could hope for. You know, look at that complex set of relationships among all these complex systems. If we can actually begin to see the patterns in the data, then we have a much better chance of actually getting our arms around this. That's where societies become more efficient. That's where more innovation is sparked. When we talk about a smarter planet, you could say that it has two dimensions. One is to be more efficient, be less destructive, connect different aspects of life which do affect each other, in more conscious and deliberate and intelligent ways. But the other is also to generate fundamentally new insights, new activity, new forms of social relations. So you could look at the planet as an information creation and transmission system. And the universe was hearing its information, but we weren't. But increasingly now we can. Early days, baby steps days, but we can actually begin to hear the planet talking to us. Sustainability requires our many ecological, environmental, economic and social issues to be accounted for. The carrying capacity of the natural environment is an unpriced input to resource production, and it is increasingly accepted that resource users should be made to pay for the environmental impacts. It is the complexity of natural systems that create the real challenge for environmental problem solving, and the reason why for example further research on system analysis tools could provide further opportunities for interdisciplinary, integrated and holistic solutions to resources management. The last few years have seen a shift from policy and reaction to high-profile events, then to control of releases to single environmental media, and to the present position of moving toward integrated management of all environmental media. This development has moved away from classical chemical risk assessment toward environmental holism, including recognition of the ecological value of these media and resources management in the whole life cycle. In addition, in light of increasing concerns of material security, shortages and environmental pollution, realistic frameworks have emerged for processing mining waste as a resource in many parts of the world.
Mining and mineral processing wastes are one of the world's most significant and chronic waste concerns. When properly evaluated, potential reuse options for mining waste include to re-extract minerals, provide additional fuel for power plants, supply construction materials, and repair surface and subsurface land structures altered by mining activities themselves. As a result, resource reuse can help to close the loop between supply and waste disposal, providing a sustainable alternative to mining of virgin stocks. Properly accounting for natural capital in resources management first requires a more comprehensive understanding of how materials and their waste byproducts, including those produced through mining activities, are used and discarded. Rather than releasing high-quality wastes back into the environment while paying to extract it as minerals through traditional mining, it is more sustainable and energy efficient to close the loop. Again it comes down to systems thinking. Systems thinking, for any kind of system, natural, scientific, engineered, human, or conceptual, provides a very useful framework for really solving problems rather than just taking decisions.